What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Modern Warfare. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the second of the brand new guns that came with Season 5, and this is the AN-94. So starting it off, as always, let's have a look at the damage profile. Now with this gun, we have different multipliers for the limbs, the lower torso, the upper torso, and the head, but we're mainly gonna focus on the upper torso values here. So our upper torso damage is 34, 27, 25, 20, which means this is gonna be a three to five shot kill, assuming you're hitting those upper torso shots. If you're not hitting those upper torso shots, it's gonna take you four to six shots to kill. As for headshots, we get a 1.6 times headshot multiplier, which means we deal 46 damage to the head up close and 29 at the longest ranges. Now, the damage isn't really the interesting part about the AN-94. The rate of fire is what's most interesting. And with this, the AN-94 has a two round hyper burst. When you first pull the trigger, two rounds are gonna come out basically immediately before it ramps down to a slower and more consistent rate of fire. Having said this though, there are some inconsistencies that I've noticed with this, where it's not just the first two rounds that fire quickly, it's the first three rounds. Now I've tested this multiple times, I've broken it down frame by frame, and the first two rounds come out extremely fast. It's roughly 1000 rounds per minute, it could even be a little bit more than 1000 rounds per minute, but it is hard to test with just a two round sample. But in either case, those first two rounds are very fast. However, the third round is technically coming out even faster, even though it doesn't sound like it, it doesn't match up with the audio, and it doesn't match up with the description. If you actually look at the bullet counter on the bottom right, that is displaying the actual performance of the gun, and the third round is also coming out very, very fast. The delay between the second and third round is just 50 milliseconds, which is insanely fast. And then finally, after that third round is fired, this is where it ramps down to 571 rounds per minute, which is pretty similar to the AK-47 in this game. Now, what this means for our time to kill potential, assuming we're hitting those upper torso shots, is in the three shot kill range, we get a ridiculously fast time to kill potential at 110 milliseconds. This is nearly instant and way faster than basically every other full auto gun in the game. There's almost nothing that competes with this in core game modes, as long as you're hitting that three shot kill with the first three bullets. But keep in mind, this time to kill potential relies on you hitting all three of the first bullets. If you're missing the first few bullets, your time to kill potential plummets at that point. Now, I've already had a ton of people asking me, what about if you fire this in the burst mode? So if you toggle this over, which doesn't require a perk or an attachment or anything, you can just do this at any time, toggle this over to single fire mode. With this, you're actually firing that two round burst every time you pull the trigger. And with this, we get that same rate of fire within the burst, roughly a thousand rounds per minute, could even be a little bit faster. Then on top of this, we get a burst delay of about 55 milliseconds. Now keep in mind, you do stack that 55 millisecond burst delay with the fire time of the previous round, so the effective burst delay is more like 115 milliseconds. And what this means for our time to kill potential in this case is with that three shot kill, assuming we're hitting those upper torso shots, we now get a time to kill potential of 175 milliseconds, which is still an incredibly fast time to kill. That's very, very competitive with all of the SMGs, for instance, but it's not quite as fast as if you were just firing this gun full auto at your target. Having said that though, there are certain benefits to using this in single fire mode, even though it technically kills slower. First up, it's more consistent since it doesn't rely on you hitting those first three bullets. It doesn't matter which burst is hitting your target, they're all firing at the same rate of fire. And second, it really cuts down on your recoil. Those two bullets in the burst are going to be very close to each other. And therefore, if you're trying to pick somebody off at really long ranges, or if they have extremely good cover and you can only see a little tiny bit of them, the burst mode is often a better bet for you. So yeah, definitely some pros and cons to using this burst mode versus full auto. And I would say it really depends on the situation you're in. Although I should also mention that if you have it in full auto mode and you just tap fire, you can effectively still get the advantages of that burst mode. However, you do have to pause slightly between taps. If you tap too quickly while in full auto mode, then it will just continue firing full auto and you'll get that slowdown to your rate of fire. So yeah, it really depends on the situation and it does take some time and practice to really master this. But now that we finally have those intricacies out of the way when it comes to rate of fire, let's move on to our ranges. And as you can see here, our three shot kill potential to the upper torso extends out to about 21 meters. And this really isn't incredible by any means. It's a nice three shot kill range, but it doesn't really stand out as being amazing. But then our next damage range goes from 21 meters up to 33 meters, and this one allows you to get a four shot kill anywhere in the torso. So as long as you're not shooting limbs, you'll get that nice consistent four shot kill. 
And then the next damage range from 33 meters up to 42 and a half meters. This is where you can still maintain a four shot kill as long as you're hitting upper torso shots. And then beyond that, it'll be a five shot kill, assuming you're hitting that upper torso. So yeah, not really incredible in the range department, but we do have some barrels that make a big difference here that I'm going to be covering later in the video. As for suppressors, no surprises here. The lightweight suppressor reduces our range values by 25%, and the monolithic will increase our range values by just 7.5%. Next, I wanted to have a look at Hardcore, and in Hardcore, we can get a one-shot kill to the torso, anywhere lower or upper torso, from 0 to 21 meters, and beyond that, it'll be a two-shot kill. But of course, it is worth mentioning, since we have that Hyper Burst, if you're hitting the first bullet, you're almost definitely hitting the second bullet as well, and therefore, I would say it's a very solid choice for Hardcore. Now, moving on to Hipfire, we've got very standard Hipfire for the N94. It's the same as almost every one of the other assault rifles in the game. After that, let's look at Idle Sway, which as you can see here, there's a little bit of Idle Sway, so it does move around a bit while aiming down sight, but it's really not too bad. More importantly, I wanted to point out the Iron Sights. I really don't like the Iron Sights on this AN-94, and I'm really hoping we get a blueprint that has the same Iron Sights as in Black Ops 2, because I really like those back in the day. As for recoil, we've got a nice consistent recoil pattern that kicks upwards and to the right with very little side-to-side -side bounce, so it's actually quite controllable and predictable, I've found. And the really nice thing about this is the first three shots are always going to be really, really tight together. I also decided for this recoil plot on the right hand side, I did two two round bursts. So you can see just how close those bullets will be with no attachments equipped when you're using it in burst mode. And while the bullets don't go in exactly the same hole, you do have a really nice tight grouping there. Moving on to handling, our aim down sight time is fairly standard for an assault rifle at 267 milliseconds, and our sprint out time is also 267 milliseconds, which again is normal for assault rifles, and this just leaves us with our tactical sprint out time, and this is 400 milliseconds, which is also standard. As for our magazine capacity, this is very normal for an assault rifle at 30 rounds with 60 in reserve. And this trend continues, our reload time is also quite normal for assault rifles at 1.52 seconds, whereas if we use sleight of hand on this, we can speed it all the way up to 1.12 1 seconds, which is quite nice. Finally, we've got movement speed. Our base movement speed is 94.5%, and our aim down sight straight speed is 48.5%. Both of these, again, are pretty normal for assault rifles. So with that, that wraps it up for all of the important base stats of the AN-94, but now let's move on to the unique attachments, and start it off with the barrel attachments. The first one is the 330mm barrel, and with this one, our aim down sight time is improved by just one frame at 60 FPS, so it's now 250 milliseconds. On top of this, our movement speed is improved by about 1.5%, which is a nice little boost. As for the downsides, we lose some bullet velocity, which also means we lose 15% to our damage range, which isn't nice. And to top all that off, we lose a little bit of recoil control, which if we have a look at the side by side here, it's honestly not that much extra recoil with this barrel, so it doesn't make a massive difference. But if you take a really close look at it, you can see that there is a bit more recoil with this barrel. As for the next one, this is the 438mm barrel, and with this one we get an increase to our damage range, which it turns out this is a 35% increase, which is awesome. Alongside that, we also get improved bullet velocity, as well as improved recoil control, which again, let's have a look at the side-by-side -side here. And with this, it definitely helps a little bit, but honestly, it's not a massive reduction to the amount of recoil you have with this gun. It's very, very slight. I would say it's hardly even noticeable. But for the downsides on this one, our aim down sight time is slowed down by 2 frames at 60 FPS, so our new aim down sight time is 300 milliseconds. And then also, our overall movement speed is reduced by about 3%. Finally for barrels, we have the Sila or Sila barrel, and with this one we get a 20% increase to our damage range, which is a nice little boost, but not as much as the previous barrel. And with that comes added bullet velocity as well, which is really nice. And the only downside to this one is our aim down sight speed is slowed down to 300 milliseconds, just like the previous barrel. But with this one, keep in mind, we maintain the same movement speed, unlike the previous barrel. So that wraps it up for the barrels. Now let's move into the different magazines that we have access to. The first one is the 45 round mag. And with this, it says that we get a reduction to our aim down sight speed, but at 60 FPS at least, there is no measurable change. And another downside that's stated is a loss of movement speed, and it turns out we lose about 1.5% to our movement speed here. Now, if you want to bump that up to the next level, we can get a 60 round mag on this. And with this, we do see a very slight reduction to our aim down sight speed, just one frame at 60 FPS. So our new aim down sight time is 284 milliseconds. And then our overall movement speed is reduced by about 3% with this extended mag. Now, it turns out there's one other attachment that looks unique, at least for this gun. And this is the Sonic Brake. 
But based on my testing, it turns out this is just a standard muzzle brake. But in either case, here's the recoil plot for you guys. So you can see the comparison between the base and the sonic brake. And you can see a slight improvement to your overall recoil, but nothing too major. But with that, that finally covers it for all of the important stats that I wanted to cover for this gun. And now it's time to move into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. And the first one I've got here is designed more so for regular multiplayer. With this, I really don't feel like any of the barrel attachments are necessary on this gun. So we're going to be running it without a barrel. We've got the Solo Zero Mini Reflex just because I don't like the iron sights very much on this gun. We've got the Close Quarters Stock to help with our aim down sight time, as well as the Stippled Grip Tape to also help with our aim down sight time. So this one's designed to be a bit more on the mobile side. Then we've got the 45 round extended mag, just because I do feel like I burn through ammo fairly quickly because I'm often just firing the first few shots in a burst. And if you're doing that, you burn through ammo really fast compared to if you're just holding the trigger down the whole time. And finally on this, we have the Merc 4 grip, which will help a little bit with recoil as well as hip fire. And on top of this, it improves our movement speed a bit. As for an example class setup on this one, we're running that with an M9 as a secondary. You can use really whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Our perks are going to be EOD, Ghost, as well as Tune Up, so we can get our Dead Silence as often as possible. Then our Lethal is a C4, and our Tactical is a Stim Shot. And with that, that's pretty standard. Not too much to say about that. Now let's move into the second setup, which is a bit more geared towards Warzone, or also Ground War. And with this, we've got the Monolithic Suppressor, so we can stay off the radar, especially in Warzone. That's very important. We've got the 438mm Barrel, which is the one that really helps with our damage range quite a bit. We get that 35% boost, which is awesome. After that, we've got the TAC laser, which helps us the most out of any single attachment when it comes to aim down sight speed, which is great. Also, it helps us with our aiming stability, which is another really nice benefit with that. And when we combine this with the VLK 3x optic, this helps with recoil, so we've got a really nice pinpoint accurate gun at this point. And this just leaves us with one last attachment, which again is the 45 round extended mag. Now you could also go with the 60 round extended mag on this, especially in Warzone, but I just feel like the 45 round mag is a little bit more versatile and balanced for this. Now throwing this one into an example class setup, this one is designed strictly for Warzone, but I wanted to share it anyway. With this, we're using Overkill with the Rytec AMR, which I've been playing around a little bit with in Warzone, and now that it has the one-shot headshot potential, I actually like it quite a bit. I'm not sure if it's better than the HDR or the AX50, but I am enjoying it at the moment at least. Our perks are going to be Cold-Blooded, obviously Overkill, and Amp, so we can swap between our guns quickly. Then we've got a C4 as our Lethal and a Heartbeat Sensor as our Tactical. And with that, that's finally going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the AN94. As for my thoughts on this gun, I think it's one of those guns that as long as you treat it right, it has so much power and potential in regular core game modes. Having said that, it isn't a very forgiving gun. If you're missing those first three shots, you lose basically all of your advantages with this gun. And also, it is not a very good gun in Warzone. The time to kill, even if you are hitting those first three shots, it just isn't great in comparison to the other assault rifles out there. And while it's not completely unusable, and sure, you could probably do just fine with it, it doesn't really excel in Warzone by any means. Of course, those are just my opinions based on my experience, as well as the statistics of this gun. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on the AN94 based on what you've seen so far in Season 5? Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, including the ISO, which is the SMG that just came with Season 5 alongside the AN94, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.